Hi, this is a short presentation and tutorial of our FS Playground utility software. It works with Microsoft's Flight Simulator 2020. In this video, we'll cover the operation, the installation, as well as some technical tips and tricks. FS Playground at the moment offers three things. Replay of your flight, aircraft position movement to stored position memories, including a library system with sharing capabilities, and finally, force feedback operation with Microsoft's Force Feedback 2 joystick and possible other force feedback devices. The first thing you'll have to do is uh, disable damage from overstress and collisions. So, let's start with a replay system. Select the position on the map and start flying there. Start up FS Playground. It will automatically try to connect to FS. If set so, it will also connect to the force feedback joystick and uh, we'll talk about that later. The general status is always indicated on the top right of the main window. We see here that we have connected to the flight simulator as indicated by the FS label. We've also connected to the force feedback joystick indicated by the FF label and we're also in recording mode. One thing that is convenient to do for this presentation and maybe for normal use, especially if you have only one monitor connected to your system, is to activate the Always on Top option. This will keep the FS Playground window on top of Flight Simulator's window. Now, let's go back into the simulator and fly around a bit. For our tests, we'll use the Kefalonia Airport, located on the west side of Greece. It's a lovely island for vacation and uh, it's got some lovely scenery around to fly to. We'll use a feature from the following section, but as it's convenient now for our purposes, uh, we'll just click on the Move Aircraft button. This will transfer us to the final of the 32 for LGKF. As we make it for the landing, our track is recorded. Let's make it a bit bumpy so we have something interesting to see later on. Note that at the moment of touchdown, the vertical speed, side slip, banking and pitch will be shown on the notification area. Also, a few seconds later, and if the option is active, the text-to-speech engine will speak the first two parameters. This is especially useful if you fly in VR. Once on the ground, the landing rating may be shown again by engaging your Gear Up button on your joystick. While still on the ground, pressing the wheel brake key on your joystick will activate the Replay Controller window. This is a semi-transparent, always on top window that lets you control your replay along a few other things. For now, let's go back to our main window and activate replay mode. Select the replay screen and click on the replay button. We are now in replay mode. The top right of the screen shows the REP label and the airplane is moved to the beginning of the recorded track, replaying whatever we did. One important thing to notice is the smooth playback switch. Activating this option doubles the reproduction frames by using interpolation. Make sure that your computer can handle the increased workload. We'll cover that aspect later and in greater detail. For now, let's enjoy a couple of outside views. Quite interesting is the drone camera, as we can set it up in all interesting points and enjoy the views. Clicking on the Go To Landing takes us to the moment that our gear touched down for the first time. The replay is now paused. We can use the timeline marker to move back and forth in time. We can change the weather, the time of the day and a million other things in FS and still enjoy the same flight.
Moving to the replay controller, we have the following keys. Replay. We'll start the replay from the beginning. The pause and unpause button will do just that. Start or pause our replay. The S and G buttons stand for save and go to. A temporary memory is used and by pressing the S button we'll save our current plane position and attitude. Pressing G will uh, move us there if we have moved to another time position. This is a quick and easy way to capture or enjoy interesting clips of our flight. While paused we can use the next and previous buttons to move one saved point at a time. Moving to the other side of the controller window, we see the Minimize button. This will hide the controller. The Close button will not only close the controller window, but it will also exit replay mode. The Move Aircraft button will exit replay mode and return the aircraft to the selected memory from the main window. Moving back to the main window, we have a couple more things to talk about. The first is the recording interval. This is how often the recorder takes the position from FS and saves it to the track. Obviously, the more frequent, the smoother the playback. But going at a faster pace than your system can support causes jitter and errors. A good starting point for a fairly fast PC is about 40 milliseconds. While recording, the achievable time interval is displayed in the measured text box. It is also indicating the amount of errors during recording. This counter should be close to zero and not increasing significantly. You will have to experiment to find the sweet spot for your system. The replay rate is uh, doubled if the smooth playback is active. This may also ask too much from your system, so you'll have to experiment. Closing on the replay system, there is one kind of funny feature that is included in FS Playground. It is in the main control tab of the aircraft control. The touchdown freeze will stop the simulator the moment the wheels touch down. It was a small experiment during development and is not related to the replay system which offers similar functionality. But it was way too funny so we left it there. Of course, you'll have to press Unpause to continue, or you can just press a wheels break joystick button. This concludes the recording replay system. Time to move to the aircraft control and library system. We select the corresponding screen and start from the main control. This screen has a mix of replay and library related controls. It is supposed to be the most frequently used screen from the main window, so it has a bit of everything. The most obvious control here is the drop down list with all available memories. These are the positions in the current library. Each library may have up to 40 positions. Selecting one and pressing the Move Aircraft will take us there. If the position is too far away from our current position, Flight Simulator will have no ground or scenery loaded. In this case, we will have to give it time to create it. If our program detects such a scenario, it will move the aircraft at a high altitude, wait for a preset amount of time, and then move to the desired final altitude. The time required will vary upon system to system, scenery and a few other parameters. You will have to trim this uh, time from our options menu to best reflect your system. If this fails, your plane will be underground with somewhat comic results. When this happens, just press the Move Aircraft button again.
We will now mention very briefly the toggle switches and their operation on this screen. The on the ground switch, when on, will move the aircraft on the ground. If the reset trim is active, once we move our aircraft it will zero out any trim on pitch and roll that the aircraft may have before moving. Lower gear will automatically lower the gear when moved. This is useful in some cases where the landing gear are retracted by the flight simulator when the plane is moved. Fast move uses an alternative, faster method to relocate aircraft. It may cause issues when the plane is on the ground. In this case, the move aircraft button may have to be clicked two or three times. It is still the preferred method and you should leave it enabled. Go to landing will enter replay mode and once a landing has been detected, will move the time and pause on the very moment the plane touched the ground. Reset landing will erase the landing parameters. This reset will also happen automatically every time the move aircraft button is pressed. This text box shows the parameters of the last landing. Now, let's move to the next tab named Details. Here we have the information for the selected position memory. We can modify them by hand or get the present plane position by pressing the Get Aircraft Position button. We can also get the nav aids, useful for ILS or other instrument-based drills. They will be sent to the aircraft when we move it to this location. One important item is the web text box. Here you can save any web link or any other node that is related to this memory point. It's very interesting to see an actual aircraft landing and then try our own. In this example, clicking on the link will launch the YouTube video with a plane landing where we're about to land once we move our aircraft. We find this integration of FS with the real world with such is a truly great feature. Moving on to the rest of the controls, we see the clear memory button. This will do exactly that, so use with care. Let's move now to the next tab labeled Airports. Here we can search any airport by the ICAO designator. The database is at the moment from open sources, and many airports may not be present or very precisely located. NIGRAF and maybe Flight Simulator's own database is on the to-do list. As you type the airport ID, any matches are displayed on the results window. Double clicking on one will put it in the selected text box. Any information will be shown here. The available runways will fill the list. To actually use one, you have to double click on the desired runway. This will update the active memory position with the proper coordinates, so the plane will be positioned there when moved. If the memory already contains a valid position, a warning will be displayed to prevent accidental overwrite. In this example, the calculated position will be at a distance of 5000 feet from the runway threshold with the plane lined up. If the on runway switch is on, the plane will be positioned on the runway instead. The runway length works as a filter while searching. Only airports with runways shorter than this value will be shown. This moves us to the last tab, labeled Library. This is where all 40 memories get a title and a few other details and can be exported, imported or shared. Notes as well as web links that are relevant may be entered. FS Playground always works with a library file named defaultlib.pgl. Any changes you make will end up in this file. The file must be exported to any other desired file name. The default folder for FS Playground libraries is called FS Playground and is inside the user's document folder. It will be opened in Windows File Browser window by clicking the Open Folder button. 
The third part of FS Playground is the force feedback. At the moment, it has only been tested with Microsoft's force feedback to joystick. We'll uh, cover this section fairly fast, as it may not be of great interest to many. The forces simulator interaction has been implemented for the following parameters. Airspeed. The center in force is adjusted according to the current airspeed. We do this by setting the speed that will create the maximum center in force on the joystick. We enter this value in the max force speed text box. The maximum forces for each axis are set by the vert for vertical and HOR for horizontal sliders. The force set at any given moment can be seen in these two bars. The minimum recentering force, when airspeed is very low, for example, may also be defined for the two axes here. Another force reproduced on the stick is the movement of the control stick on touchdown. The stick will jump with an intensity proportional to the touchdown vertical speed. The maximum force is set by the G and D slider and will be generated at a specific feet per minute as set in the maximum vertical speed force. While on the ground, the stick will move while taxing. And finally, force feedback may be used for the stick shaker functionality. When the stall warning is active, the stick shakes to warn the pilot of an imminent stall. Not all planes have this feature and for some may not be desired, so the option may be turned off with the stick shaker switch in the options page. A great improvement of the joystick's operation, regardless of its force feedback capabilities, is that you can control the friction or inertia to movement. This creates a much improved feeling to the operation compared to a single spring-loaded stick. Select either friction or damper and set the intensity. You will have to try and select what best fits your preference, as this is quite subjective. It's still a great improvement on the overall experience and something no spring-loaded joystick can actually do. The Options tab offer a few technical-oriented controls. Connect to Joystick on Startup should be selected and causes the program to start using the force feedback as soon as it is launched. Auto Reconnect and Connect on Minimize are features that are not for the FS so much. But since FS Playground may be used for joystick control with other games as well, these options make it possible to reconnect to the joystick either periodically or after about 5 seconds once our application has lost mouse focus. The bottom two sliders define the centering position of the stick. You can also disconnect or connect reconnect with the two buttons. A connected joystick will be shown on the top right with the FF label and will be also shown in the devices list. Time to move to the last part of this rather long video. The options screen will give us some control over the looks and general functionality of the application. Since we could not include RGB lighting, uh, being software and all, we thought that some color themes would be the coolest and closest thing we can offer. So we have uh, seven preset themes, labeled 1 to 7, and uh, theme 0 where you can customize your RGB, uh, I mean your colors. Moving on to the toggle switches. Always on top, as we said earlier, keeps the application on top of other windows. Useful for single monitor setups, where we always need to see the application, while something else is running. Move aircraft with the gear up button allows the moving of the aircraft while on the ground by activating the gear up joystick button. Info pop up with gear down button uh, will redisplay the landing info assuming a landing has been detected after moving the aircraft. Unpause with brakes is used by the freeze on touchdown feature. Pressing the wheel brakes joystick button will resume movement if frozen by this feature. Speak landing rating will use the text to speech engine to announce your landing vertical speed and side slip, especially useful if you fly in VR. Use player control 
enables the replay controller in replay mode. Unhide with breaks button will redisplay the replay controller if it was hidden by its minimize button before. Play opacity sets how transparent or not the replay controller will be, makes it less intrusive on top of the FS window. Delay movement is the time in seconds that the plane will wait on high altitude before moved to the final position. As explained in the replay section, this is needed for long jumps where the scenery and ground is not loaded by FS yet. You will have to trim this value to best match your system's timing. This about wraps this video. The software is still in heavy development and there are many improvements on existing features as well as major new systems to be implemented. We hope that it will give you many hours of flying fun. For news and developments, check out our site. See you later!